rocket jumping. It's such a simple gameplay mechanic. All you do is point down, jump, shoot your rocket, and then you're flying. Insanely simple once you know what's going on. But let's take a look at this. What the fuck? Whose run is this? Dude, it's my run. No, it's not, dude. Dude, I promise. Dude, Aurora, you couldn't do this in a million years, dude. This is out. What the fuck? Who did this? I did this. No, you this is... didn't. Yeah, I did. This is no, you thing. fucking did it, dude. dude this, this is, is like the run. greatest run I've That's ever seen. That's actually the best fucking run ever. What the fuck? <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> Jesus <Alan>. Christ! <laughs> Rocket jumping is a simple gameplay mechanic, yes, but when players experiment and tinker with it, it mutates into something unimaginable. Wanna go mock speed and sync up multiple rockets to do super jumps? Wanna skip across miles in under seconds? Wanna use rocket jumping to your advantage and play the game to a new level of intensity? Because I sure want to. Many games have the same mechanic of rocket jumping, but surprisingly they all have their own flavor, accent if you will. But even if it may be a little different, rocket jumping is still rocket jumping. Aim below your feet, jump and shoot, and you're in the air. Someone back then thought it was a good idea to shoot yourself with a rocket launcher. And it worked. It worked surprisingly well. And since then, we've all been doing it. But before I get into the works of what makes rocket jumping super good within a game, I want to go through its history all the way up to... Let's say Team Fortress 2, rocket jumping. Why TF2? Well, because I love its rocket jumping system, and it's the most popular game to have such a rocket jumping community. Just search on YouTube rocket jumping and it's the first thing you'll see. I want to show how important not just rocket jumping, but also the movements that come along with it, such as air strafing, are to first person shooter games even up to this day. So come join me in this history lesson. The year 1993. The game freaking Doom. First person shooters were on the rise. Wolfenstein had come out last year and this year Studio ID brings out Doom. What's it about? Kick demon ass. That's pretty much it. Shoot, kill demon the game. That, that's it. What, what came out around the time was Super Mario All-Stars, Sonic CD, it, those were children games. All right, get a hold of a real game. A first person shooter game. The shit was rad, yo. That's how the kids would say back then, right? You boot up your PC, you set it to Doom. Or in this case, boot up your MS-DOS, go, go through a maze of programming, and then set it to Doom. And bam, you're playing Doom, having the time of your life. But then you come across this level. Mount Erebus. You've been playing this game for a while, you know that there are secrets within the level. And you're a gamer, you know, you, you want to complete the game, 100%. But Mount Erebus' level had a secret that was difficult to reach. For this secret, there's a ledge right here and a switch on the other side that you gotta reach. However, it's a pretty big distance and can't really do it with just a regular jump. How are we gonna get there? Through regular means, it's impossible, but through out of the ordinary means, you can get extra force, a boost, something external. But what can you do? Huh, that was pretty cool. I wish you can do that at any moment without dying and have more control over it and air strafe around. Wait, what's an air strafe?
The year is 1996. Quake had come out and the PC gaming world couldn't be happier. A first person shooter that wasn't based on the whole sprite 2.5D look of Doom or Wolfenstein, no 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 no, this was in full 3D with models, polygons and whatnot. You're in the world moving around X, Y, Z ranges, god damn son! The game had its own game engine, the Quake engine as it was called. An engine that gave life to the realist 3D experience at the time. And with this new engine came along its new physics and movement. Physics and movements that, to this day, we are still experiencing it. For you see, the Quake engine was created, but ID Studio would have never expected the type of movements that players would come up with. Create a world with a set of limits and rules, and you'll have the inhabitants living in said world testing the limits to see what makes it crack. Circle jumping, strafing, bunny hopping, and of course, rocket jumping. The renaissance of first person shooter movement had begun. Quick paced movements. From a technique only to reach a secret room, to an entire community pushing the ability of rocket jumping. As how Romero said it in reference to the Doom secret switch technique. The only way you are supposed to reach the secret switch was by 1. Getting the invincibility. 2. Blasting a rocket into the wall so you could fly backwards into the box. The advanced techniques of strafe running at all did not come about for almost a year after Doom's release, so there was no way we could anticipate someone getting into the secret area any other way, much like the way we never anticipated Quake's rocket jumping. The Quake engine was ingenious at the time, and many developers wanted to get their hands on it. Studio ID and their Quake engine had set the first step for true 3D FPS gaming, and developers now had a pathway as to where they would want to go. I'm going to go off course in the rocket jumping part, but keep in mind that stuff like rocket jumping and strafing came from the Quake series. A whole community had mutated from playing on the ground running to in the air rocket jumping and bunny hopping. And they kept getting better and better, as we see in Quake 3 when people were fighting each other with these techniques. But while that was going on, we were seeing the engine's physics being transported into different games. Many developers made their own version of the Quake engine by modifying it, but for the purpose of this video, we want to set our eyes at a group of nerdy individuals, a group of programmers tic tacking away on their keyboards in the state of Washington. A small group of programmers that we now know today as Valve. You see, back then Valve looked at the Quake engine, got it, modified the hell out of it, and came up with the Gold Circ. Gold Source Engine. Gold Source Engine was used for the older Counter Strike games. Day of Defeat, Team Fortress Classic, but the original game it was used for was Half-Life 1. All the movements we saw in Quake were also doable here. Bunny hopping, air strafing, grenade jumping and such. We were seeing people doing their thing with jump maps, running everywhere with their strafe hopping and whatnot. Not just that, but the rise of speedrunners for FPS was happening too. The amazing skills that these hoppers had were just... Like, do yourself a favor and watch a speedrun of Half-Life. Just search it up on YouTube. The boundaries of movements were getting pushed to the max. From the Gold Circ or Gold Source engine, it turned into the popular engine we now know as the Source engine. And the Source engine was fucking revolutionary at the time. Counter-Strike Source, as appropriately named, was the first game to use Source back in June 2004. And then shortly after that, Half-Life 2 came out in November of that same year, and that really showed us what the hell the Source engine was all about. In-game physics set to a new level, and the movements that had its origins since Quake were still present. No one had seen physics like this before. Serials in the physics system interact with each other, so a set of steel drums floating will behave exactly how you expect. <laughs> It was the source engine physics. Everything had movement to cups to dumpsters you can move them around. The game Half-Life 2 specifically gave you a gun called the gravity gun to mess around with. Of course the in-game physics was the meat of the engine that they wanted to market. And also, again, check out speedruns for Half-Life 2 as well. They're fucking, they're too good to pass, alright, in my opinion. From the Source Engine, we get so many good goddamn games, each game with their own type of physics. And then from there, we get Team Fortress 2, which, in my opinion, is the best game to rocket jump in. Whew, okay, alright. My god, 
It's a lot of history to get to the point we're at right now, but necessary to understand what rocket jumping means in video games. The system of FPS movements from the Quake days have long been used over and over as a base for so many games that the world has played. Even if you've never played any of the games I mentioned before, you most likely cannot escape the roots from the Quake engine. Ever played Call of Duty? Yeah, roots came from the Quake engine. Titanfall? Yep, from the Source engine, which has roots from Quake engine. The reboot Doom game? Yep, that goes without saying. Unreal Engine games? They had Unreal Tournament, which, uh, they had rocket jumping, obviously. Hell, even Apex Legends, for you Zoomers out there, uses a modified Source engine, which comes from the Quake days. D duh. Duh. <laughs> The movements we now associate with the genre of first-person shooter games came from the old days of Quake. Now, I'm not going to boomer mode saying that Quake was the OG, this and that, no, no, no. Uh, obviously, there come so many hours from developers into modifying a newer game's physics to bring something new to the table. All I want to point out is that the techniques like rocket jumping, strafing, bunny hopping, etc. can all be done within any game's physics as long as the coding allows it. Rocket jumping adds spice to a game's gameplay. It's a reward for a player who wants to push the boundary of what's possible within a game. And by god, it's worth it for that aha moment, making the player feel cool that they thought outside the box. Introduce any easy to learn, hard to master mechanic, and you'll have players wanting the player game to the extreme. With Rocket Jumping's history and its deep roots in not only the gaming community, but also a game's coding, you'd think many games would implement something like it, right? Well, sadly, I don't think so. Originally, this video was going to be something along the lines of why Team Fortress 2 is the best game to rocket jump in. I had searched out other games to compare rocket jumping to, but I came to the conclusion that, uh, there actually aren't that many big games that have it. And that's a bit of a blanket statement. Of course, there are many Quake-inspired games that have it, but on bigger titles, however, they just slap a simple jetpack feature, and with the press of one button, you're in the air. And that's... boring. I don't want to drive automatic, I want to drive stick shift, man! Of course, rocket jumping isn't something that should be implemented into every first-person shooter game. A game that's more realistic like Battlefield shouldn't have soldiers blast up a skyscraper. And also, a game isn't obligated to fit in with the demands of someone like me. Personally, I love it when developers go outside the box when it comes to competitive gameplay. A game like Titanfall 2 can easily have its adrenaline pumping gameplay without something like rocket jumping. However, people still like to use grenade boosting, aka gravity star boosting, to move across, and pff, people still want to do explosion jumping, whether it's intended or not. But when we keep getting games that are more grounded, both literally and metaphorically, into simple, extremely simple mechanics, I feel like many players are looking for that cinnamon spice on top of their whipped cream gaming experience. That's why I appreciate Overwatch for giving a wide variety of gameplay for any type of player, especially a character like Pharah. For as much flack as this game gets, I've always appreciated the effort and the characters that were put in. Farah does have a rocket jump, and if you rocket jump and toss in her shift ability, it gives you extra height, so technically still a rocket jump. Though the rocket jumping mechanic isn't as fleshed out as, let's say, Quake or TF2, I understand that Overwatch is trying to appeal to as many players as possible, and something like the rocket jumping scene would be maybe too much for other players to handle. However, what I don't understand are games that would be so goddamn fun to have an ability like rocket jumping. Like, let's use a game such as Borderlands 2, for example. It's a game that has a bunch of wacky characters, wacky guns, wacky combat, uh, wacky gamer girls, but through th all that wacky stuff, you don't have anything as fleshed out like wacky rocket jump mechanics. You can certainly do a rocket jump or even a grenade jump, but there's no air control and you're bound to one direction without any air strafing. And if you mess up, you can fall off the map and die. But can you imagine if they just... just did the bare minimum for a real in-game rocket jump mechanic? Polish it up a bit, you don't even have to make it perfect. Ugh, oh, my, my god, it, it, it would have been so much fun. It's, it's a lot funner than just running around forever, getting bored, holding that shift button.
We could have had a game where you just play with friends and just rocket jumping and grenade hopping across the map. Kind of like when you sidestep across Gerudo Valley. Not an intentional way of transportation, but it does the job well. Or have an even wackier combat with a rocket jump. After you rocket jump, just throw grenades everywhere across the map. Well, that's so much fun. Like, look at this vast landscape with a high ceiling. Just add platforms here and there, and you can bring in another layer of fun. Like... <sighs> like, it, like, it could be so gosh darn fucking fun, excuse me, Lord. Jesus. Or not even that, but let's look at Doom, the recent one. A badass game, with a badass soundtrack, with a badass character, with a badass combat system. Everything is here. Everything. Except the badass rocket jumping. <laughs> we got platforms above ground. Enemies to shoot everywhere. All this free space in the air that got ledges to grab onto. And you're telling me you can't even rocket jump. You can't even rocket jump, let alone a nade jump. A production ID game that doesn't allow you to do any explosion jump. What, like what type of hell? Where? What timeline did I get myself into? Like, why hold yourself back right there? You guys were the ones that came up with this shit. Like, why hold back? Oh God, it could have been so beautiful. Why tease me? Oh, oh, get it off the screen. I don't want to see it anymore. All right, I'm joking, but I don't. I don't actually hate these games, obviously, but I do get disappointed when I find out about it. Rocket jumping is too good to pass up on on some games. There's so much fun with explosion jumping. Like, come on, y'all! Like, all I ask for a game is to allow us to blow ourselves up and soar the skies. More games can use a little rocket jumping. Hell, even any type of explosion jumping in their gameplay. It's that cherry on the top. The sprinkles to an ice cream of a game that makes the fun not only memorable, but last longer. It's for those moments like in Halo when you launch yourself off an explosion and get that sweet gamer moment. Oh, oh check out my hair! Holy crap! Oh my god! <laughs> or maybe even launch your buddies! <laughs> yes! Yes! Guys, yes! <laughs> Or a log in Battlefield. Wow. wow. Dancing Coyote. Oh, he's shooting at me. Yeah! Alright! Oh, nice! <laughs> Gamers are creative. The player will always find a way. And it's not fair to leave the game so limited to them. Don't pen up players like cattle. Jesus Christ, give them free range to experiment, man. We're not always going into a game to experience realism. This is a piece of art to experience. This ain't real life. This is a video game. And if your video game isn't grounded in reality, then neither should you, the player, be grounded as well. Thank you so much for watching my video. Um, if you actually made it this far into the video, like you watched the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving me a shot. Uh, I really do love making these types of videos. However, it takes a while. It really does take a while. And because of that, uh, unironically, I want you guys to actually like, make sure to like, subscribe, <laughs> share, you know what I mean? Like comment your thoughts and like tell me, you know, where do I need improvements on or you know, well, you know, like, you know, right? <laughs> but, but seriously, help, help, um, you know, help me out a bit, right? I certainly love making these types of videos, but, it, jeez, it, it take a while, and a lot of work. And to show that love back to me, please, help me out, please. Ayúdame, por favor. <laughs> but, in all, in all seriousness, no, though, like, it, it, this, this video was extremely fun to make. I love this video. I think this is probably my favorite video I've ever made because something I love, something new. Hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, 
I am going to start releasing videos like this once in a while because I just need that creative output. And like I said before, hopefully you guys like it. <laughs> but serious again, uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll leave it at that before I just keep rambling on <laughs> for much longer. I'll let you guys go. Have a good day or night, depending what time it is. And uh, fucking... Dead. <laughs> Rocket jump? That sounds dangerous. Ugh. Shut up!